Hi, this is Ethan Hine. Welcome to Play With Your Music. In this video, we're going to be creating a musical space graph of Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer. Uh, and what that means is we're going to be placing the different sound sources uh, left to right in the stereo image and from front to back or close to far. This is necessarily going to be a little bit subjective. You might disagree that, well, really such and such a sound is not medium far back, it's very far back. Um, but this is our analysis anyway. If you want to follow along with the song, um, please open it in another browser tab from YouTube. There's a completed space graph in the links in the description to the video if you'd like to take a look at that. So first of all, let's just listen to a little bit of the song get a sense of what we're talking about here. This is the second break, the dancing chickens part. All right, so here is our analysis of the placement of all the songs that you just heard. Here we've got the left side of the stereo image, and here we've got the right side. That just means that if you're listening on headphones, the songs over here are gonna be in your left ear, and the songs over here are gonna be in your right ear. Uh, and center just means you're hearing things from both ears uh, at equal volume. And if you're creating your own space graph, I strongly recommend using headphones because it's much easier to figure out the stereo image that way than from speakers. Um, front to back, uh, these are the sounds that just feel like they're being played like up close to you. And these are the sounds that just feel like they're off in the distance somewhere. Um, so as is very common, the bass is dead center and up front. That's probably going to be the case in any song. Um, You've got these two guitars that are playing almost exactly the same part, hard panned to the far left and far right, and they also feel like they're very close, and that's because they're very dry. Um, so usually the way that you create a feeling of distance in music is to apply reverb or echo. Think about the sound that you hear if you're in like a church or any kind of big stone building. Um, versus a dry sound, like when you're in a small room with carpeting and everything is very dead. So usually uh, sounds that have a lot of reverb on them sound like they're further away, just because in your normal uh, experience of the world, stuff that is further away has a more kind of diffuse echo equality. So um, what you'll see here is I have the drums, in general, are up pretty close, except for the snare drum, the one that goes bah. So in uh, the beat, like doom, bah, doom, bah, uh, the bah is the snare drum. And the snare drum has a ton of reverb on it, so that's why I placed it all the way in the back, whereas the rest of the drums are pretty dry. And we're going to be talking more about that snare drum reverb in a second. Um, the fact that some of these rectangles are really wide just means that they're, these sounds are spread across the stereo image. They don't have like a specific location. Um, so the drums are comprised of you know, the different cymbals and the toms and the snare and the kick and so on. And each of those instruments might be placed in a different stereo position to give the overall impression that you're sort of surrounded by drums. Um, versus the, uh, the horns, which like the guitar, are really hard panned on either side. So if you're listening in headphones, you hear them very clearly out in the sides, and you don't really hear them in the middle. Um, the lead vocal is also spread really wide. Um, it sounds like it's being doubled. There are a couple of copies of it, and maybe what they have done is uh, spread the two copies out widely to give you this feeling of sort of being surrounded by Peter Gabriel's voice. Um, and that's part of the sort of unearthly quality of the song, because normally if somebody is singing to you, their voice is only coming from one location, right? It's not coming from all around you. But they've used this, uh, this processing to make his voice kind of hyper-realistic and a little bit otherworldly. Uh, another thing to notice is that we've got two different locations for the Prophet 5 synth. Um, that's that kind of organ-y sound. Um, 
we think there are two different tracks of it, one of which is really dry and all the way on the left, and one of which has a little more reverb on it and is over on the right. Uh, so it's interesting that they've taken the same sound and given it two very different locations. I think it helps enrich um, the sound image. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about that snare drum sound. Um, that sound is called gated reverb, and uh, while Peter Gabriel was an early and enthusiastic user of this effect, it's most closely associated with Peter Gabriel's former bandmate in Genesis, Phil Collins. For example, in... So it really sounds like the 80s, right? Um, and gated snare is an interesting technique because uh, if you were to just put normal reverb on the drums, the sound you would get would be something like this, like It would be a very diffuse sound. It wouldn't have like that sort of sharp, punchy attack to it that you get on dry drums. And what they figured out was if you couple the reverb with this thing called a noise gate, something very interesting happens. Um, noise gate is usually used just to keep you know, noise out of your recording. And all it does is if the volume of the signal falls below a certain level, then it just cuts it off completely. And so what they found is if you take a snare drum with a lot of reverb on it, the sound is like this, right, with this long tail. But if they put a gate on it, then it cuts the tail off pretty quickly. So you get like that. So, um, you get that giant, diffuse reverb sound, but you still have the kind of punchiness and attack that you want for a, for a kind of driving beat. So gated reverb, the snare drum sound of the 80s. So that is it. That's the musical space of Sledgehammer.